Did you ever experience those kind of situations? Do you know why they are actually happening? My name is Petar Palovic, I love sharing my kitesurf experience with you and welcome to my favorite episode where we are going to talk about the most common problem in kitesurf community for every level of kitesurfer and this is launching and landing the kite with an assistant. We will see the safest process of launching and landing, analyze all the steps, special situations for launching, common mistakes. Can you agree with me that launching the kite with an assistant is one of the most confusing or scary thing in our kitesurfing session? I still remember my first years of kitesurfing, I knew how to ride upwind, I knew how to do a basic jump, but I didn't have any idea of how to smoothly and safely launch my kite. So let's remember quickly our wind window. Our launching and landing position are at 3 or 9 o'clock. It means your line should be around 90 degrees compared to the wind direction. Let's see the safest way to get into your launching position and after this I will give you more tips. First of all you have to understand that you cannot trust your assistant 100% or put any responsibility on him. Make sure to choose the widest area and set up your lines downwind of your kite. Check again the direction of the wind to analyze where should be your launching position. Ask possibly a kiter to help you launch. Do the pre-fly check. It means making sure that your back lines are completely free and not twisted with the middle lines. Holding on the chicken loop, connect your safety leash on the safety line. Ask the assistant to put your kite in launching position. Holding the chicken loop in your hand, walk slowly upwind and again do the pre-fly check of your lines. Once you are sure that everything looks fine with your lines and your kite, keep on walking upwind still with the chicken loop in your hand and the front lines on tension. When you see that your kite is getting tension, stop in that position and connect the chicken loop on your harness. Make sure there is no one flying a kite around you. Take the bar with one hand and with the other show the signal of launching to your assistant. Gently launch your kite. Show the signal of landing the kite to someone on the beach. Slowly land the kite with one hand. Once the assistant grabs your kite, let go of the bar, disconnect the chicken loop and with the chicken loop in your hand, walk towards your kite to make sure it is well secured. Now we'll go through each step to understand the main reason why doing it this specific way. It's important to have enough distance from any object in case the launching doesn't go as planned. If your lines are 22 meters long, plus when your kite stays just on the safety line, the span of your kite is from 3 meters to 5 meters, depending on the size of the kite you are using, plus your safety leash in extension is from 50 centimeters to 2 meters, depending on the size of the leash you are using, so you would need at least 30 meters downwind of you free from any obstacle. More safety zone you have, better and safer it is. To find 100% clear and safe space for launching is not the easiest on many kitesurfing spots. But this is also one reason why you should be extra careful with launching your kite. I don't know how you used to set up your kite, but I can assure you that the downwind setup is the safest. In one of my next episodes I will clear the different ways of setting up the kite. Now we are coming to the part that lots of kitesurfers skips, and I was skipping it for a long time and made me lots of problems and stress while launching. It is really important to check the exact wind direction and visualize your exact launching position. I suggest doing it in front of your kite and opening your arms to find where would be 90 degrees from the wind. Choose to stay next to or in the sea while launching your kite. Because most common mistake is to steer too much the bar. 
in what situation you would choose to start your kite from the middle of the beach, I will show you later in the episode. I highly recommend before launching to put the board next to the sea and more upwind of your expected launching position to not get the board stuck in your lines. And once you start your kite, you are getting the board much easier and safer so you can faster go on the water. Asking for help is much cooler than waiting that someone recognizes that you want to launch your kite. Can you please launch me the kite? Thank you. <laughs> Do the pre-flight check of the lines so you are 100% sure you did a good job with connecting your lines on the kite. I highly recommend making sure that your chicken loop quick release works perfectly, especially if you didn't use your equipment for a while and when you decide to borrow or rent equipment. While holding on the chicken loop, connect your safety leash on the safety line. And I like to show this signal to my assistant to put my kite in launching position. Just walk a bit more upwind and again, make sure that your back lines are free and not tangled around the kite or other objects on the beach, like grass or wooden sticks. This can happen on many kite spots. If this is the case, show the signal of quitting launching and get rid of the objects around your lines. Even if you are not connected on the cheek loop, make sure you are not pulling the bar while checking your lines. If the assistant lets the kite go, it is not so safe. Always check them with one hand holding the cheek loop and with the other hand shaking the back lines. Once you are sure that everything is fine with your equipment, still holding in your hand the chicken loop, keep on walking upwind to find the tension in your kite. If for any reason your assistant lets the kite go, you can still hold on the chicken loop. And if there is too much power in the kite, automatically your hand will open and the kite will lose all the tension. If the chicken loop is connected on your harness, you will definitely need more time to react. While searching for the tension in your kite, can happen that you're exaggerating and you keep on walking too much upwind. If you see that the assistant is fighting with your kite, this definitely means that you are too much upwind. Walk downwind or just let go the chicken loop and make again sure where is the wind coming from. While walking upwind, Make sure to walk also slightly backwards so you keep the front lines on tension and carefully watch the kite. As soon as you see the kite is getting a bit of tension, this is the time to connect the chicken loop on your harness. Then if you see that there is still not enough tension in the canopy, walk carefully a bit more upwind, still without touching the bar. If you feel the wind is strong, it is also recommended to pull a bit the trim line. Once most of the canopy is on tension, make sure there are no kites in the air around you. I recommend to take the bar more in the middle, just with one hand, so you are sure that your steering while launching is slower. You can also launch with the hand completely on the side of the bar or with the floater. Just you should be extra gentle with steering, which sometimes for some people is not easy. The best tension of the kite you feel when your hands are in the middle of the bar, no matter if it's for launching your kite, riding or jumping. After showing the signal for launching, it's important to understand that it is not a drama if you don't steer the bar enough. The kite will just remain where it is. And if you would pull too much, many problems are possible. Slowly steer the kite to reach 11 or 1 o'clock. If you see that the kite is moving with too much power, be ready to first let go of the bar and use the chicken loop quick release. Practically nothing can go wrong if you're following all these steps of launching your kite. 
let's clear now the steps of landing your kite. Make sure to give the right signal when you ask for help to land your kite. Definitely you want to land the kite just with one hand, slowly depowering the bar. I cannot think of any reason that you should land your kite with two hands. On strong wind you can easily get too powered because your lower hand becomes too short and automatically you are pulling the bar. Can be difficult for you and for the assistant who is helping you to land your kite. Once your assistant grabs your kite, it is super important to let go of the bar. Also important to understand that you should feel free to let go of the bar even if the assistant didn't grab your kite yet. Especially in strong and gusty wind. And I highly recommend to disconnect the chicle from your harness and walk towards your kite. Because again, you cannot trust that your assistant secured your kite perfectly. And sometimes, some assistants are holding your kite in smile position, waiting for you to grab it and secure it. Once the kite is secured, you can disconnect the safety leash from your bar and I highly recommend immediately rolling your lines. If you're not completely alone on the beach, it is not nice to leave your lines all around. First of all, if someone is stepping on them, it can damage your lines. And second, you never know who can get tangled in your lines while walking on the beach. What if kids are playing or dogs are running? This could put them in dangerous situations. Most important, do not start rolling the bar without securing your kite properly, because it could become a problem. Let's see again quickly the main steps of launching and landing your kite with an assistant from the kiter's point of view. Can you please launch with the kite? Oh yes, Peter. Thank you. We saw everything about safe launching and landing. Now we'll see the special situations of launching your kite. In a light wind, it can be tricky to launch your kite. Here you have to understand that creating more power in the kite is not by pulling the bar or walking backwards, but by walking upwind. So my advice is that once you are ready to launch and the assistant lets the kite go, walk or even run upwind to create more tension in the kite. Walking or running upwind, you will feel more wind on your face. So the same will happen with your kite. If the wind on the beach is not stable enough, it can be tricky for launching. When you are checking the wind direction, it is also important that you see if the wind is passing over obstacles that could make the wind unstable. It's called wind shadow. If you didn't yet, make sure to check my previous episode about the most important thing in kite surfing. In this case, it is better or even mandatory to launch your kite while you are on the beach and the kite closer to the water. Here is even more important to follow the safe steps while launching your kite. Thank you for watching this far, I'm glad you want to learn how to safely start your kitesurfing session. 
please consider subscribing and now I want to share with you common mistakes which you saw people doing maybe you have been doing the same thing I know I was doing a lot of mistakes and thankfully I never got in big trouble but I realized that I was very lucky that my assistants were always holding on my kite so tight but what would happen if your assistant lets go of your kite too early let's see more examples so you have a clearer idea of why you should always follow the safest steps of launching your kite You should not hold on the bar while connecting the chicken loop on your harness. If at any time your assistant lets the kite go, can be a problem. While you don't have tension in the lines, your chicken loop might get out of place, which sometimes you don't realize and after giving power in your kite can completely slide out. can also happen that one of the steering lines is twisted around your bar so once your kite gets tension it starts pulling on one side and you would need some time to react sometimes could be too late this is the main reason of most accidents while launching the kite some kiters are in a hurry to be in the launching position and sometimes they keep on walking too much upwind once the kite gets tension will make lots of problems to the assistant And if the assistant lets the kite go, then could be dangerous for the kiter. It has no sense to start checking the lines just when you are already connected. If your assistant lets the kite go, again can be a problem. Sometimes people don't realize that the kite is still flappy. And often with pulling too much the bar, they are creating fake tension in the kite. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you understood a lot about launching and landing the kite with an assistant. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment below and if you like this video I would really much appreciate that you share it with your friends or even other kiters. Subscribe to not miss anything new and I will see you in the next episode. Again, again, again. <laughs>